Hey, this is Notzer, and we are in the Tier 4 Japanese cruiser Kuma. It has 7 140mm guns, 8 torpedoes, 6 AA guns, a surface detect of 11.3 kilometers, top speed 34.5 knots, total 24,200. For my modules, reduce crit chance on main battery, reduce the chance of flood and fire. For my commander, situation awareness and faster turret traverse. We are on the map Fault Line, and I've got a full division. Destroyer, cruiser, battleship. Great balance. We can help each other. And we're all headed out west. There appeared to be a battleship, a cruiser or two, another battleship, and maybe even a destroyer. I expect that this enemy Myogi will continue forward. I am hoping that I'll be able to fire and set him on fire. If he chooses to show himself through the gap, so far, he hasn't changed his mind. We also have an Isokaze ready to ambush. But he doesn't have vision in order to lead with his torpedoes, and I'm too far away to use my aircraft. I only got one charge. There's an enemy aircraft carrier in the match. I need to save it for defensive purposes on myself or a friendly near me. But eventually, he comes through the gap. We engage. I slow down just so I could catch sight of him and I do very little damage. I don't cause a fire, but my friendly Isokaze can set up a torpedo attack, and we're going around the island, of course. This battleship is way too far forward. He really needs a destroyer or a cruiser to screen for him and tell him what's going on. This is really not what you want to do because he's so close, I can send my torpedoes against him. I predicted that he would try and straighten up and move away at some point. Why not? He's crazy if he continues on this path. And sure enough, he is trying to straighten up and head away. We do get a fire on him, which is great. And I don't want to die, so I'm going to be angled rather well. The friendly Isokaze has torpedoes in the water, but I think he predicted that the Myogi might continue one direction. He changed it, and only one torpedo made contact. We get another fire and we're gonna land two of our torpedoes. Is that enough to kill him? It is, and we get first blood. That felt great to predict his intent, but we've got two cruisers and a battleship still on this flank, and they are firing at my ship. I'm going to engage the St. Louis. He's right at the edge of my engagement range. I don't think he's actually moving that fast. Of course, it's the St. Louis, right? They're already really slow. Their battleship's slow. But I think he realizes, okay, don't want to go through that gap. That's very dangerous. Enemy Konigsberg is also in the area. He is at max range. I could engage him. It wouldn't be an easy shot. I check my torpedo range. It's definitely not in range. He returns fire, and he does a little bit of damage. Thankfully, I was angled in such a manner that he couldn't take full advantage of a broadside. But I decide... Let's go after the South Carolina. The South Carolina is going to take a torpedo attack from my friendly aircraft carrier. I set him on fire. He puts it out. The aircraft carrier also hit his torpedo. Probably caused a flood. I can gauge it by how fast his health is dropping, and it's, it's dropping pretty good. I think he only has one fire on his ship, so that's around 250 health every second. The enemies are trying to get us, but we're so thin in the water, we're so low. We're basically a destroyer. There are destroyers that are taller than us in the game, so it's a really hard shot. And who's going to get the kill? Is it going to be the dot? Oh man, we did a lot of damage, but we didn't get the kill. I'm happy that we were able to take out the South Carolina. The Konigsberg is not within range, so I decide to try and move towards the center of the map. My feeling was there's an enemy destroyer there, and I love to counter destroyers. Anyone who's watched my content for a while will realize I value the power that destroyers give and take away from a game. And any time I have a chance to take them out, I'm going to take it. As we're going over there, I try to fire on the St. Louis, and the island's going to block a lot of that. We did a little bit of damage. It's worth the time. However... I should focus on getting to my location. I felt like there's a destroyer somewhere over there. I let my team know, and I get confirmation. I also see that there might be a cruiser that's coming towards 
that area of the map as well. And I would love to take that guy out. It looks like the Isokaze will be joining us in the center, and that's fantastic. At the very least, it's going to be a 2v2. Two cruisers and two destroyers. At the best case scenario, it's going to be a 2v1 in our favor. And again, why would I pass up an advantage, a clear advantage? The eastern side of the map, not going as well as I would like. They have lost two ships without any kill. And yes, that Omaha, he did decide to go this area. But I don't see the enemy destroyer. Let me engage with HE because, of course, look at his angling. You can't fire AP at that. He is close enough, though, that I can send my torpedoes. And I just totally forgot how easy it was to send torpedoes forward of the Kuma. I noticed that the enemy destroyer chose to go to the center of the map. He wants to get to my team. Now, the Omaha opening up, we're going to switch to AP and we're going to fire at the waterline. The Isokaze pops his smoke and he gives it to me. He's moving too fast, though. Now he's the primary target. I have to kill this guy. I want to keep my teammate up. And the Omaha over angles the AP ineffective. We got to switch back to HE. This is a complete waste of a shot, but 500 is worth it if we get to that point. HE is the superior ammo type for this. The Isokaze tried his torpedoes. The Omaha was ready for them as well. And the Omaha is burning. The Isokaze is under fire, so I choose to move forward. Maybe I'll be distracting him. Maybe he'll choose to fire on me. I don't know. I'm not taking any damage. There's no risk to my ship. There's no reason to be in the smoke anymore. And we get another fire. We get a little bit more damage, and the Isokaze gets the kill. Okay. Okay. It's another dead ship. I wanted my Isokaze to stay alive. That Nicholas. Yeah, good job. He died to close quarters. Nice. Secondaries were able to take him out from that battleship. And so far, every attempt to penetrate our base and attack our aircraft carrier has been unsuccessful for the enemy team. The St. Louis conveniently is going to appear right at this gap. We're going to transition our primary target to the St. Louis, since there's nothing else that we can engage. And I think he feels it. I think he understands. Oh, this is bad. Oh, I didn't know that there was an enemy Königsberg there. But let's finish the St. Louis first. We fire HE. We could switch to AP, but he's so low. HE should be sufficient. I don't want any weird penetration or non-penetrating shells. Good. We take out the enemy St. Louis. And this Königsberg is moving directly at me. However, he is not paying attention to my ship. We just lost our friendly battleship. He was just overextended, taking too much damage. The aircraft carrier, a battleship, and the cruiser were all engaging him. It doesn't look like my torpedoes are going to be successful. And quite honestly, I don't think my friendly Isokaze is going to have success either. Oh my god! Look! That enemy destroyer went all the way around the eastern side of the map, the south side of the border, and is now right at the friendly aircraft carrier. I don't get people who do that. We can't engage the enemy Koenigsberg, so we're going to engage the Bogue. And the first shot gives us two Citadels. We earn Confederate 8k. I switched to AP. However... I really shouldn't have done that because AP is not going to be successful when there's angling on the target. However, I did want to have AP because I knew the Koenigsberg would be in a broadside scenario. He's trying to catch me out. I have a little bit better angling. Oh, nice. We do like 11,000 points of damage, four citadels. Can we just finish them off right there? We do. Enemy Carl. Boy, Carl, this is not your day. He runs right into Akuma with a broadside AP. At the waterline, just finish him. Really? Only 60 hit points left on the target? Come on, just finish it. All right, that Citadel was way overblown. Didn't need that. Didn't need that at all, but I'll take it. So, of course, my attention is on the enemy destroyer, the Genevni, that's trying to assassinate my aircraft carrier. I tell my team, focus him down, help him out. I'm nowhere near it. That cruiser has to protect the friendly aircraft carrier, and they take him out. Great. And look at what we've got here. We've got a Bogue trying to escape. However, we all know Bogue's not going to get away. 16 knots in the water. 16 knots. I'm twice as fast as this Bogue. It's just who you're going to die to, Bogue. Are you going to die to torpedoes from the Isokaze? His guns, however, I don't think that's likely. Or are you going to die to my gun? So I just try to open up the angle enough to see the target. I slow down, so I remain on the target without running into the island in front of me. We miss with our first salvo badly. We hit with our second salvo and get a citadel, 4400, and we fire again. 
This should be enough. We take him out, we get another Citadel on the target. We earned Kraken Unleashed, and I feel like you should definitely use HE against early tier aircraft carriers. Their armor is just so pathetic. I mean, it's beyond pathetic. You can penetrate with HE shells, small caliber HE shells, 140 millimeter guns. That's what I have. It's just barely above a standard issue destroyer. Now, there are two enemy battleships left, one on the east and one on the west. We clearly cannot go to both of them. I see that the Arkansas Beta is very low, and I felt like the Wyoming had a clear advantage. Plus, there is a friendly cruiser that's close by that could turn the tide if necessary. So I'm going to head out west. My friend died to this battleship, and he said, Oh, he's basically full life. Oh, thanks, friend. Yeah, you did a good job there. I know it wasn't his primary target. He said this guy actually ambushed him. It's always interesting to hear that a battleship ambushed a target. They're not very easy to hide. So, yeah. Gotta pay a little bit more attention to the map. I've done it too. I've lost track of where a target is. He comes in my flank and he just obliterates me with a full broadside. We've all done it. It's just really embarrassing when it happens. Friendly aircraft carrier lands huge damage on the enemy Wyoming, and he's below 10,000 hit points. Where he started, 35,000, he is using a heal, and I believe he had damage control, so no fires or floods stuck on the ship. And I'm just curious, what is waiting for me? Is he looking my direction? There is an island in between the island that's right in front of me, so I have to wait a little bit more. Friendly Isokaze is within range. I believe he's firing his guns along with the torpedoes. And we're able to engage him. I do a quick check. One thing you could do if you're firing over an island, zoom into the shells and look where they're going to fall so you can compensate around an island. That's one trick I use to try and increase my accuracy whenever engaging around an island. It also works when you're just out in the open. But I feel like the best confirmation of accuracy is just to watch it in your binocular view. We land a couple fires. And he's burning pretty good. I think the Isokaze also land a couple more fires. We earn high caliber. Who's going to get the kill? Is it going to be my fire? Is it going to be the Isokaze? Isokaze burns him down. Good job. However, I think he's also burning down. No! Isokaze! I always loved you. <laughs> you saw my reaction there. I, uh, I was so emotional in that moment. We were working together so well for most of that game, and he died. He died by fire. Which would be an awful way to go, by the way. Oh, one interesting thing. Apparently, 0.5.5 is going to introduce more death animations into the game. There's going to be more variety for fire, torpedo, citadels, ammo racks, you name it. There should be a somewhat unique death animation so you can have an idea of how they went out. Right now it's a little ambiguous how a ship actually dies. They pretty much just sink to the water. Sometimes they break apart, sometimes they break their back. Break your back is usually a sign of a torpedo attack, but there should be more variety in 5.5 and that's exciting. So we're looking at the two battleships. I was nowhere near this, I did not see this. My friend Poimane was dead so he could see it. Look how low they are! The enemy Arkansas Beta has pulled a Notzer. The Wyoming fires on his position and the game ends to a capture. I just love this game. The Kuma is just a wonderful ship. We earned First Blood, Confederate, Kraken Unleashed, High Caliber, 5 kills, 2 torpedoes, 10 citadels, and a pretty good amount of credits for a Tier 4. We did 1,533 base XP. The Zuiho also did a great job in the match. We did around 102,000 points of damage. Oh yeah. The destroyer was very helpful in helping me survive. And Poimane was helpful because he was dead. Good job being dead, Poimane. I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you next time.